the first thing, and, and, you know, I learned about this issue 10 years ago. I thought for sure that cell phones, wireless devices were perfectly safe because could they, could they be sold if they weren't safe? Um, I believe that government agencies were protecting me and that wireless devices were absolutely fine for my kids. But of course, I had no idea that my devices even emitted anything. I mean, wireless radiation is invisible. You can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't hear it, although some people can actually hear clicks, which is would be another talk. Um, but wireless devices all emit a kind of non-ionizing radiation, radio frequency radiation, it's microwaves, and you're gonna hear a lot of words to describe what your cell phones and all wireless devices emit. And I'm gonna kind of go over that a little bit, but it's invisible energized waves, your cell phone, laptops, computers, Wi-Fi router, access points, tablets, video game consoles, Wi-Fi printers, cordless phones, ear pods, anything Wi-Fi, anything Bluetooth. You almost can't buy anything now unless it has Wi-Fi in it. All of that is wireless radiation and it creates emissions which are in the air and it's absorbed into your body. Yet we see commercials like this, learn how to get gig Wi-Fi. What they don't tell you is that there's frequencies, um, data carrying waves coming off of all of these devices that is absorbed into our bodies. It's the same as microwave radiation. It's a type of microwave radiation, but not at heating levels, because obviously you wouldn't want to heat up your brain. And the scientists and the officials that set limits way, way back decades ago set safety standards, which really help the technology to work, but did not address the non-heating impacts from wireless radiation. These are artificial frequencies. It is not the same as the sun, although you might hear, oh, the sun emits uh, you know, electromagnetic radiation. These are information carrying waves. So there's a, a frequency and data carried on the wave, that video you watch, the Instagram, the pictures you snap, those are all moving invisibly through the air and into our bodies. Radio frequency radiation is the term for this swatch of frequencies. It's non-ionizing. That means it's not the same as an X-ray or um, atomic bomb radiation. It doesn't directly damage DNA. However, it has serious adverse effects at low levels because you don't have to directly ionize the um, the the atoms in order to have an impact, and it's digital pulsed waves, completely not natural. Here's some examples of sources. This is a quote unquote small cell increasingly being put in front of homes in communities. Here are antennas on top of buildings. Now in 2011, the World Health Organization Internationally Agency for Research on Cancer classified wireless radio frequency as possibly carcinogenic to humans. That was a decade ago now, over a decade. And that was based on science, on studies on humans that found the phone, people who used cell phones to their heads had increased risks in case control studies of glioma, a type of malignant brain cancer. And there also was studies that looked that found oxidative stress, um, not enough animal studies at that time, although there are many animal studies that existed, but there weren't the kind of uh, in carefully controlled, uh, highly credible animal studies uh, that this group wanted to see in order to bring it up a notch to probable or proven carcinogen, which is the other determinations that the World Health Organization has. So for example, air pollution you hear is, was deemed a carcinogen, a proven carcinogen. And that was after um, hundreds of thousands of people were the statistics that had been harmed by air pollution. So whenever you get a determination of 
this is a carcinogen by those authorities that we all often look to, it takes many, many bodies, much statistics, which are our bodies. Our bodies are the statistics and we have to prove it with our bodies, which is of course unacceptable because we should be working on prevention. So brain cancer, acoustic neuroma, that's a kind of a tumor, which is not a cancer, but can, um, can impact your life in many ways. Um, and thyroid cancer has now been associated with wireless radiation by the study by Yale, um, funded by the American Cancer Society that just came out a few years ago, breast cancer in women who place the cell phone in their bras, which many, many people do, has been uh, linked to wireless radiation. And also there was a, a study done where they looked at women who use the cell phone near their chest. And so not just tucked against in the bra, but also just right up to the chest, which is how many people text these days, and they found increased risk for breast cancer. So decades ago, when the US government sort of set, they didn't sort of, they set limits for what was an acceptable amount of exposure to radio frequency radiation from cell phones or cell towers. And they didn't have long research on long-term exposure. They, didn't, they had, there was no pre-market safety testing. Uh, and the FDA asked for a study, a large scale animal study to look at what would be the impacts to animals exposed to very low non-heating levels. And they found clear evidence of cancer in the hearts of male rats um, and evidence of tumors, um, malignant gliomas, and tumors in the adrenal glands in certain groups of the male rats. They also found in both the rats and mice DNA damage. However, this study has been downplayed by authorities, by groups that have longstanding industry ties. And after this study came out, if you even look up, read about it online, it looks as if, well, you know, humans, rats are not humans. You can't take this animal study and compare it to humans. This was a $30 million dollar study, carefully controlled so that those animals didn't have heating levels of microwave radiation. And they found cancer and DNA damage. Dr. Linda Birnbaum, who's the, who was at the time of the study being undertaken, the director of the National Toxicology Program, as well as the National Institutes of Environmental Health Sciences. And she submitted um, a brief, a, a statement in an amicus brief in our case. We actually ended up having to sue the federal government, which we'll I'll talk about, uh, talking about how these findings demonstrate the potential for radio frequency radiation to cause cancer in humans. And now many scientists are stating that the science is conclusive to show that wireless radiation, radio frequency radiation is a human carcinogen. Here's one study, um, cancer epidemiology update, because of course you might say, well, is the World Health Organization going to relook at this? Are they going to look at the latest science? And in addition to the NTP study, there are many other studies on oxidative stress, impacts to the brain and so forth. There hasn't been a reconvening of that expert group. In fact, they have been advised by their advisory group to do so, but until they do, it hasn't happened. But this paper says if they were to meet again, they meet, it meets criteria to be a human carcinogen. Mm -hmm.